In this video, I'm gonna show with you five unpopular but highly profitable niches for social media marketing agency and how you can go about dominating them. And these are gonna be huge in 2021. So to find out, all you're gonna do is keep on watching. Before I dive straight into the niches, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that these niches are within the e-com sector. And so when it comes to social media marketing agency, there's two sectors. Number one is local business. So I'm talking restaurants, I'm talking clinics, I'm talking dentists. And the other sector is e-commerce. I'm talking tech, I'm talking beauty, health and wellness, apparel and fashion, uh, jewelry, et cetera, et cetera. And so the reason why I'm a huge advocate of e-commerce and the reason why this video is gonna be all about the e-commerce sector is because number one, just taking a look at the social economic landscape, this year was a bit of a weird one, right? And it forced a lot of people to shop online. It also forced a lot of businesses to really beef up and strengthen their e-com side to their business. And we saw an exponential growth in e-commerce. And so there's never been more money thrown at the e-com space. And that as agencies that help brands grow online is great news. That's the first thing. The second thing I love about e-commerce is the fact that the returns are very, very clear cut, right? So we can clearly tell them, hey, I spent this much for you. I made you this much back and this is the return on ad spend. And the reason why that's incredibly vital is because if we compare that to local business, when it comes to local businesses, you can't really pinpoint their value, right? Because you are optimizing for leads. You're getting people to walk through the door. And so your value is not very clear. You can obviously attach the value to those leads that you're bringing them, but the returns are not as clear cut. And the third main reason, there's so many other reasons, but I wanna keep this video uh, not too long. The third reason is because there's no geographical limitation, right? So you can literally reach out to companies in the US, in the UK, in Canada, in Germany, right? In Australia, there's no geographical limitation because number one, they operate online, right? So you're not cold calling them or you're not walking into their office because oftentimes they're just running the, the business purely online and meeting with their team members purely on Zoom, right? And that is the nature of their business. And number two is they're completely used to hiring people online without having to physically meet with them. And early on in my social media marketing agency, journey. I did a local business. I was helping gyms and health centers. And one of the main struggles and objections that I faced is that they often wanted to, to see me uh, physically before signing on, right? They wanted to have that physical interaction. And honestly, I don't blame them because that's how they're used to doing business. But for me and the type of lifestyle that I was looking for, it didn't really work. So that's the reason why I'm a huge advocate of e-commerce. Uh, and the reason why this video is going to be specifically about the e-commerce sector. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people get wrong is that they think that e-commerce is a niche and that could not be further from the truth. It would be like saying local business is a niche which is completely wrong right e-commerce is a massive massive sector and to call it a niche you need to narrow it down right that's literally the definition of a niche it's a very specific group of people that share similar characteristics and traits between them okay so that is the reason why we're going to be doing e-commerce now onto the actual niches the first two niches that i want to speak about are behavioral niches and the funny thing is that what most people recognize as a niche is what i call a product based niche right i'm talking tech i'm talking jewelry that is a product making the niche but understanding that all a niche is is just a group of people that share similar characteristics between them right so that could be a product that they sell the same product or it could also be that they share the same values or ethics or ethos right or they behave in similar ways or they operate in the same country the point is you can narrow it down in so many different ways and so one of my favorite type of niches is the behavioral niche and and the reason why I love this type of niche is because you have this kind of cult-like mentality. It's a very tight-knit community. They often share values that stray away from the status quo, which may mean that the actual niche is smaller, but the people inside are very high quality, very committed to the course, and brand evangelists. So the first unpopular but highly profitable niche is the vegan niche. You can find vegan brands in the nutrition space, in the beverage space, in the beauty space, even in the health and wellness space, it can even have an overlap with the apparel and fashion space. My point is that the vegan niche is often a subset of different product categories. And this niche is great for two reasons. Number one, if you're vegan yourself, then it's gonna come up very naturally and you're gonna be able to resonate with them so much better. And number two is it buys you a lot of affinity right from the start. One of the things that I mentioned about behavioral niches is that it's kind of like a tight-knit cult-like community, right? And so when they see that your agency just purely focuses on vegan brands, then all of a sudden you gain a ton of advantage over other agencies that are not focused on the vegan space, that don't understand the movement or are as passionate as you are about the vegan space. So that's the first behavioral niche and the second behavioral niche is give back. And by this, I mean helping brands that have a give back program in place or have some sort of charity element to their business. And that is a lot of brands 
nowadays. Again, it buys you a ton of affinity right from the start because you solely focus on those brands. And not only that, but there's a lot of overlap with a lot of other product sub niches. For example, we've all heard of the typical apparel brand uh, where if you buy one t-shirt, they donate 10% of the revenue to uh, saving the wheels, for example. That would be a, an example of a give back brand. So those are the two behavioral niches that are pretty unpopular. To be honest, I haven't really seen any agency doing those, uh, but that are gonna be highly profitable, especially going into 2021, where having a cost to your business and giving back and being socially aware is so incredibly important. So those are behavioral niches that I recommend. The second type of niche is, whoa, before we get into the third niche, if you're enjoying this video so far, if you're taking value away from all the niches that we've covered so far, go ahead and smash the like button. I'll really appreciate it. Helps out with the algorithm, helps me stay motivated to keep producing these videos for you. And with that being said, let's get back into the video. The second type of niche is what I call demographical niches. Basically, these are niches broken down by demographics, age, location, ethnicity, and a ton of other demographical data. The two I recommend that are both multi-billion dollar industries is number one, baby. So I'm talking baby apparel and fashion. I'm talking baby products. I'm talking baby food, et cetera, et cetera. And the second one is pets. I'm talking pet toys. I'm talking pet food. I'm talking pet entertainment and wellness. It's a massively growing industry. And it's again, a niche that I've seen very, very few agencies do. So those are the demographical niches that I recommend. And finally, we've got the more traditional type of niche, which is what I call the product based niche. And this one is pretty time sensitive. The one I recommend is home decor with people spending more time at home than ever. They've really given a lot of thought into their home, right? Trying to really transform their home into a sanctuary, a place where they can work, a place where they can spend a lot more time and still feel comfortable. And it's been a growing, growing niche in the uh, past few months. And this niche could include anything from artworks to even home office uh, supplies, just like this chair or the desk that I've got behind me. So those are the five niches that are pretty unpopular. Not a lot of agencies are doing them, but that are highly profitable and on the rise and that you can dominate in 2021. The final point that I wanna address is a lot of people say, oh, you need to pick a niche that makes you passionate. Right? And it's what I call the passion myth. And I don't believe in it, right? Yes, you wanna pick a niche that you'll know a bit about, ideally that you've already bought from. So you're already a customer of that niche, especially in the e-commerce sector that helps a lot because you can put yourself in the mind of the consumer. But what we're trying to do as entrepreneurs is not be selfish and think about us and our passions. We're trying to fill needs in the market, serve other people and add value to society. And in turn, we get compensated by growing our business and by people throwing money at us. Right, because we're solving their needs. So don't overthink your passion too much because another thing that you need to keep in mind and that I truly believe in is that competence is what breeds passion, right? When you're really good at something, when you get validation, when you see results come in, right? That's when you become really passionate about what you're doing. So obviously make sure that out of all the options that you have, you pick something that is aligned with you. For example, if you're vegan, then the vegan niche may be really well suited for you, but do not fall into the passion trap. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did drop a massive thumbs up, it really helps out a ton with the algorithm. So I really do mean it. Take one second, go ahead and like this video. It's completely free and I'd really appreciate it. Also leave down below in the comments any questions you may have on this video. If you haven't subbed to my channel, there's so much content coming out on entrepreneurship, social media marketing agency, and a ton of other topics. So if you don't wanna miss out, go ahead and sub to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you never miss an update. If you haven't joined my free private mentorship community on Facebook, it's an incredible community full of like-minded entrepreneurs looking to step up their agency game, scale their agency and level up in life. So if you want to join that community, go ahead and apply with the link in the description. And if you're a good fit, we'll let you in. And as always, guys, hope everything's going well in your journey and I will see you in the next one. Peace.